want to welcome KLAA again, uh, AM 830, Angels Baseball. And we talked about Donnie Baseball earlier on in the program. And somebody who's known me for a very long time, because I've known her for a very long time. It's been sort of a love fest the last 48 hours since the passing of Stuart Scott. Um, and I love this, uh, this lady as well, a uh, longtime friend and uh, long colleague at the Worldwide Leader in Sports, Linda Cohen, joining me here on The Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Elsie? I'm great, Rich. Love you, Rich. This Same. has been awesome. You know what? And then when, when you got back on, you said, you know, welcome to The Rich Eisen Show. Yeah. I love the sound of that. That just <laughs> sounds right, Rich. It sounds perfect. <laughs> You're the best. You're the best, Linda. You know, um, so how are you feeling? How are you doing? With all those. I'm much better today. Obviously, a Sunday was a just awful for all of us. Um, and uh, but you know what? Um, something happened yesterday for me, and I just felt like I made that transition of celebrating the life of Stuart Scott, as opposed as opposed to just feeling like crap about what happened. And it, I just trying to make that transition to like when I saw the accolades, when I saw. And even reminded both of us, all of us, reminded of what Stewart, the impact he made, not only in our business but in, in, as, as a human. I realized that boy, let's let's celebrate what this guy meant to so many people, and how many people he touched, and how many people uh, that he made smile and feel alive. And that's how I feel, and that's the message, and that's what I'm going to take and learn, and I'm one of the lucky ones, as you are, to spend so much quality time with that man. I know, and it's just like the loss in this day and age of somebody who broadcasts sports with so much joy and love and affection and energy. We need more of them in this jaded sports world where people frequently make their names off of being troll-like and to have people like Stuart go on the air and broadcast with such sheer uh, love and joy, it's, it, I miss him, you know? Right. Think about it, Linda. I, I, I agree with you. And what I loved about it, because, you know, you know me and, and I know you about, you know, you hit it on the head. I said this in the radio interview I did yesterday about Stuart. Mm -hmm. What I loved about Stuart and why I instantly clicked with Stuart is that he was genuine and that he was a fan first. And that's what I am. Like, that's why we clicked, because I always frowned upon those who became jaded, just like you brought that up, who became defined by a stupid job, <laughs> where that was their whole existence, where they chose to ride the roller coaster of not how they got into the business, which is their passion and love for sports, like we did, mm -hmm. like me, you, and Stuart. Right. But these other people that have come along uh, who just care about being on TV or being on the radio or being on Twitter or just, like you said, I love the word troll, and this is very, very true. But yeah. when we came in and we were on Sports Center, it was about uh, our love and being real. And, you know, we get that from Chris Berman because I always said that when I joined Sports Center and Chris Berman was the first guy I met, you know, so real, so genuine. <laughs> what he is, There's on, no what doubt. He is off the camera is the same on. Linda, That's I, what Stuart was. Linda, I told that story yesterday as well, on a, you know, because I'm sure you and, as you mentioned, all of us were from back in that day are getting requests to talk about Stuart. And I said that too. Chris Berman was the first one that I met also because for some reason – when I got there, it was that one week that uh, Berman Boomer was doing sports centers still. <laughs> and I remember sitting in the meeting room at observing. Remember, that, that was how I started. I was, in, I was in the observation for the first month because here's some 26-year-old kid from Market 131 in Redding, California. They're just going to throw me out on the sports center set, which they eventually did. But, um, and the guy who walked in the room for that meeting was the same guy that I had seen for years on ESPN, and Stewart was the same way. Yep. Same way. Now, I'll tell this Berman story, too. I don't know if I've ever told you this, Linda, but you know the banners that are there. Are, are they still there, the banners hanging up for all the on-air people to sign for charity? Yes, they are, Rich. Okay. They're all over the place. The, the ESPN banners that you see at, at, at games, uh, and they're there to sign for on-air people to sign for, for, for charity. And I remember I go to Berman, because he was doing baseball tonight before I was doing a half-hour 7 o'clock sports center, if you remember those, Linda. Yes, on that was stealing money, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I go up to Berman, I'm like, who better to ask than you? I was just on the air for two weeks at that point. Who better to ask you? Is it, how many sports centers do I have to do before I can sign these banners? 
And Berman goes, how many have you done? And I'm like, just three? He goes, that's more than one. F it, sign them all. <laughs> is what he said. I need to just say F. But you know what I mean? Yeah. That's back in the day. Yeah. And Stuart was the same way, Linda. The same way. There was no off button with him either, as you remember. No, he'd walk into a room and he'd always have something to say. And he, and, and, and he was so unselfish, too, because he, he'd want to hear about what's going on with you and what's, what's happening with you. And sure, he would talk about his stuff. But you know what he would talk about? He would talk about it. And I heard in one of your interviews you brought this up, and it was classic because it's true. He loved his TV shows, man. He yeah. loved, like, American Idol. Like, he started watching American Idol before I started watching American Idol. I'm yeah. like... Are you a girl, Stuart? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, he knew Kelly Clarkson was going to win before I did. I you love know? it. That does sound like him. And you know, listen, you know, when, when Stuart or I weren't on the set, uh, you were, you, I think, other than Stuart, I did probably more sports centers with you yeah. than anybody else, and vice versa. And Stuart loved doing sports centers with you, Linda, as did I. And for the reason that you're also, you two guys, Chris's, are hearing right now. It's it's sort of easy to make you laugh, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right, but give and, yourself credit. You're like the funniest guy. Like, you knew I was always in your corner. Like, I just loved all your bits. They didn't let you do enough, Rich. They never let you do enough. Well, as you mentioned, the, the name of this show at the uh, at the outset of our conversation. I'm with Linda Cohn right here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show from ESPN. I, I'm going to give you the floor on Piazza, Linda. Oh, good. I'm giving you the floor on Piazza. Do you think he gets voted in today? Uh, the problem is I don't think he'll get voted in. Uh, do I think he should be in? Of course I do. I mean, this is like the third time already. And here's my deal, and here's what it is. This is nothing original. This is nothing new, but I've always said it, okay? Bottom line, they all should go in. I'm tired of this crap about the steroid error and everything. I'm a believer that there are so many things that can enhance your performance if you play sports. Do you know painkillers are the biggest issue with athletes throughout all of the years. So you're telling me painkillers back in the day during the steroid era were basically okay. And you know what? If I have pain and I take something to kill pain, doesn't that enhance my performance as well? Huh, Rich? Mm -hmm. I mean, doesn't it? So I, I would wish they all can go in. I'm tired of this, like, people playing God and deciding, well, we think Mike Piazza did steroids, so let's teach him a lesson. Let's keep him out yet another year and put in Craig Biggio, because he was there a long time, and we don't think he did any. It's ridiculous. Well, I mean, because Piazza never got popped for anything. Of course not, but they assume, Rich. Oh, look at his body. Look at him. No catcher's ever done what he's done. Come on. What he did after 9-11, that, oh, that home crazy. run, that home run, I will never forget it. And you're a Yankee guy. And I am. That's, what, that's strong by you. <laughs> That is strong by me. Thank you for pointing yeah, Linda, that out, you Linda. Just, you just missed Rich's impassioned plea for Donnie Baseball to finally yeah. get in. Yeah. Oh, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He did not dominate at the time. Jim Rice was just as dominant. Well, he got in, though. Yeah, I know. But he, the point is, I was not really a big believer. Donald Langley's a nice guy. Yeah, I know. I know. But let's forget about his problems. Here's the thing, <laughs> Um, were we talking about you or me? I forgot. Or no. Mike Piazza. So yes. Mike Piazza, I'm telling you, I'm just, I've had it with people. Now, let me tell you something. I'm excited for Randy Johnson. Do you know, I, he's obviously in. You know, yes. here's the thing with Randy Johnson. I worked in Seattle, as you know, before I went yes. to, um, I was there for his first no-hitter at the beautiful Kingdom. I covered that. Uh -huh. And he was amazing. And I loved when he was with Arizona and what he did with Kurt Schilling. Sorry, Rich. Yes. But, you know, that, 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 that with these kind of things, he lived for this big stage. He was at is I love athletes in any sport, Rich, like the Eli Mannings. Big stage, make it happen, do your best when it matters most. That's what Randy Johnson did. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, he was the one who had the bulging disc that Steve Levy reported on. <laughs> right, Linda? Exactly. He, so for that reason alone. That's right. That the, big unit, the big unit had the bulging disc. <laughs> <laughs> You see what I'm saying? People, are you listening to Rich here? The guy has talent. ESPN screwed up, Rich. Telling you. Oh, Linda. <laughs> I love you. You're the best. You got a Super Bowl prediction for me before I let you oh, go? Oh, here's the deal. Well, let me tell you a little personal story. You know, I'm a sure. deep Giant fan, right? And yep. you know how the Giants ruined the Patriots and all their fans and the whole thing, the whole thing with the two recent Super Bowls. <laughs> My son is a huge Patriots fan. Okay. 
and he was with me for the um, the last one at, in Indy yep. uh, to watch that, and uh, it broke his heart, and he had to deal with it. All well, the first one in Glendale, it broke his heart. I said, Dan. It's got to happen this year. The Giants are nowhere to be seen. <laughs> There's no one standing in the way. And, of course, who do they get in the first uh, time they get on the field on uh, Saturday night? It's it's Saturday afternoon, it's going to be the Baltimore Ravens, yeah. who are playing with no fear, who love playing in Foxborough. But here's what I would like to happen. If they get through Baltimore, then they're going to be in the Super Bowl. I don't think any team in the AFC will trip up the Patriots. It's, again, if they get through Baltimore, which I do believe they will find a way to beat the Ravens. They're just due to beat the Ravens. And um, who will be from the NFC? It's got to really be Seattle, right, Seattle. Right, Yeah, I think so, too. But Green Bay might be able to get them. Maybe Dallas could. Uh, you, you, just, you just hurt, you hurt me when you said Dallas. You. you hurt me. I don't mean to hurt you. I know that, Linda. I know that. And you need help with the Knicks the way they are. I mean, listen, clear, we cleared cap space, Rich. Hey, this is a big deal. Linda, the by the way, Linda, I'm, I'm going to have Kopitar on the show next week. <gasps> Get out. He's awesome. I know that. Although I hate the Kings because they beat my Rangers in five games in the Stanley Cup final. Oh, is that right? They did last year. But, yeah, I don't hate the Kings. I don't hate any hockey players or anything to do that. with the NHL. I know that. I'm just proud of you Thank that you. you're recognizing greatness. Oh, I'm well-rounded, Linda. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, he's so money, and he doesn't even yeah. know it. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, oh. Take care of yourself, Linda. Thanks for calling in. Anytime, Love Rich. you. There you go. There's Linda Cohn, at Linda Cohn on Twitter. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience. <laughs> 